Hi guys, first of all, before I get into this, um, I fucking hate iPhones and my next phone will not be an iPhone because they give you shit um, storage and then when new updates come along, it eats up more of your storage and uh, yeah, I also forgot to delete some older videos off my camera so this is take two, beer's already in the glass, already give it a sniff, I haven't tasted it yet though. So uh, yeah, let's get straight on to it. So we're going over to Latvia, which could be the first time on the channel. I can't remember in my little, um, when I was back in Regensburg, when I you know, fell in love with that Eastern European supermarket, which I banged on about. Uh, I may have drank a Latvian beer when I was doing those reviews, but I think this could be the first Latvian beer on the channel. And I'll tell you what, it's a handsome looking can. Even comes with a nice little gold um, Ferrero Rocher wrapper. But uh, yeah, so we're looking at a can of the Chezu Unfiltered. Apologies about my obvious mispronunciation. Never mean to cause offence by any of that. And this is clocking in at 5.4% in a 568 milliliter can. So uh, every little helps, I suppose. Uh, that's that's an odd number for a can, I think. I'm sure either Dean or Harry has reviewed this one because uh, I seem to remember them reviewing a couple of beers with uh, foil caps on the can. But uh, yeah, I saw this. Um, the artwork stood out for me. Very, very traditional. It's got that sort of like classic, almost like original parchment look to it. Nice gold colour scheme as well. And uh, yeah, brewed in Latvia. Interesting stuff. So. I have actually no idea what this beer actually is, even though I have smelt it, so I've got a little, that's a little bit of a lie. I've got, I've got a hint of what it could be. But, um, yeah, on, on tapped, this is classed as a specialty grain beer. Now, that to me is usually the, um, sort of, um, like, wheat beer sort of area like that special to grain like rye or spelt or something like that i've had a few beers when i was back in germany and uh, it could also potentially be sort of like the spickle land beer type deal so really really quite intrigued by this one probably should have done a, a fair bit more research so i had a much more rounded opinion of what i was getting myself into but hey ho that happens i'm already running late to a host a hangout so um yeah i want to get this review done so beer in the glass then and uh, yeah that's lovely and murky it's got sort of like a copper look to it very rustic uh, nice amber hues in there it gets a bit more faint in the shaft of the uh, wheat beer glass which i very rarely get to use so i thought this would be a perfect beer to uh, experiment with but um yeah it's definitely got the look of what i would consider like a rye bock um, from my experiences in germany i know germany's not latvia that's very basic information there but I'm just transported to some of the very traditional German styles with this beer in terms of its presentation. It's what it's instantly reminded me of. But yeah, definitely can't see through there. It's got that sort of like murky water when you're, you know, they're doing works on your, your pipes and you've got to let the water run a little bit. It's like you've done that. But uh, yeah, it's almost got like that slight like amber hue you get from like a pale ale or an IPA as well. Uh, very intriguing beer already. So let's see what we got on the aroma and it's got that sort of like sourdough starter aroma to it big yeasty uh, aroma coming out of this one it's got that sort of like wet straw like wet wheat you know like if you've gone for a walk you know i do actually do some sort of exercise every now and then but you know if it's been raining and you go for a walk and you're like going through the fields and you get that sort of like dampness with the grains and the grass and the hay and that sort of stuff. That's what I'm getting with this one. It's got like slight Belgian tones in there, but it's got like slight German uh, wheat beer, Hefeweizen aromas. But there's like this lovely fruitiness, which has the sort of like a, a bit beer sort of aroma. But it is very fundamentally bready. And then there's like this slight like savoury tone as well. Like, you know, you get these like soup, like barley soup mixes. That's what it's reminding me of, but with really nice, slightly citrusy undertones. 
yeah, it's an intriguing smelling beer, that's for sure. So uh, let's see what it tastes like. Cheers. That's fucking weird. Right off the bat, that's a strange, strange beer. Surprisingly thin. Um, first things first. Very thin, in fact. Almost gets watery on the intake. But it somehow, like, finishes heavy on the gut. It's very strange. Big fermented fruit characters coming out in this one. Breadiness, yeastiness. And it's sort of, it's like a mishmash of those sort of styles, like Belgian Strong Gale, Hefeweizen, Fit Beer, Keller Beer. Yeah, these unfiltered traditional bready styles of beer. Very herbal as well. Like, almost like has that slight like Italian herb mix flavour to it as if you would just like to put some on your the back of your hand and just lick it up it's, it's very vegetative uh, getting loads of grass, wheat floral tones <laughs> and it is quite savoury on the back end as well there's no sweetness in there from the malts it is sort of like a a barley broth in a glass. Very strange. Like a slight dusting of uh, citrus in there. I mean, it's an odd beer, fundamentally, for me personally. But it's not really that offensive. It does have that, slight, that slightly like overbrewed herbal tea character on the back end, uh, in terms of like the, the finishing flavour. Which it puts me off a lot from these sorts of beers. But yeah, again, like big Keller beer vibes as well from this. I'm not sure if this is like a very traditional Latvian style beer. But to me, it tastes a lot like a German Keller beer or Land beer or Zwickel. You know, that category that's got so many little subcategories or Zeugel beer and... You know, all sorts of like little traditional twists and turns, which is fundamentally the same thing, but like from region to region it changes, or there's like a different process, or a different tradition, or something like that. That's the beauty of like these very traditional brews from around the world. It's like the inception from the breweries to like the brewing traditions to, I don't know, like the, the processes. It It's always fascinating with me, you know, and with like craft beer, it's like pretty much like fundamental do 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 that's it and we'll put this this and this in there whereas i don't know i love like the history i'd love to read up on this brewery and of course if i do i'll put my findings in the description box down below because that's an intriguing beer for sure um i don't know if i really like it or if i just don't get it but um i'm definitely going to happily finish the rest of that um so in terms of a rating it's a hard one to rate. It really, really is. Um, because 7 is always like my, if it's a 7, I'm going to get it like tomorrow. You know, I'll get another bottle like next week or another can next week or another pint of that, you know, as soon as I can. But I don't think I'd want to drink this a lot. Every now and then, just to give your palate a little bit of an exercise sort of thing. And I'd be interested if any of you guys watching this have got uh, like a nailed down style or other examples that are like this beer that I, I should look out for next time I'm, you know, out and about. But yeah, I'd highly, highly recommend it. I definitely would. It's sort it's of like it's like that melancholic crass character to it as well. Yeah, it's remind you of uh, Fry Guy's Vehicle Tours. Um, what was it they did? Like an alcoholic crass beer with, um, I can't remember which brew it was. But yeah, loads of rye character, pumpernickel as well. Spicy, bready, yeasty tones. Yeah, it's surprisingly complex for a beer that I can pick up from a local supermarket for just over a quid. And a definitely intriguing one. Very autumnal. Uh, it's slightly warming me up from those flavours. And it's, it's reminding me of like having a big, like big hearty soup 
on like an autumn evening, do you know what I mean? It's remind you of that sort of stuff. And I think it would pair perfectly with a big hearty like gamey dish as well. So I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Although I wouldn't rush out to buy another can anytime soon. But I would definitely drink it again in the future. So if you've tried this or anything else from the brewery, then let me know your thoughts and opinions. Of course, I will uh, credit brewery properly and put as much correct information as I can down below. But if not, feel free to correct me, anybody potentially from Latvia. Uh, give me some Latvian recommendations. I'm happy to accept them. And uh, yeah, that's it really. 7 out of 10. If any of my friends have failed being YouTubers have reviewed this one, the links are down below. Check out the playlist with whatever this is related to, if I've got a playlist for it. And of course, I hope you'll join me next time for another beer review. So, thank you guys for watching, and I shall hopefully see you all later. Cheers.